I, you, he, she, we. I, you, he, she, we. In the garden of mystic lovers, these are not true distinctions. I, you, he, she, we. Take a moment to notice that everything you can observe in this moment is insentient. Whatever is being seen and heard and felt and known, the phenomena in itself cannot be said to be conscious or sentient. Even if there is another person near you, everything you know about them, the face, a voice, a name, that is not the thing that is sentient. Where is the sentience, then? Nowhere. Everywhere. When something is seen, the seeing of it is the sentience. Whatever is heard, the hearing of it, the actual hearing, is consciousness itself. Same goes for all the other sorts of sensing, feeling and knowing. The ing at the end, the actual happening, is pure awareness taking a transient form. And that pure awareness, consciousness, sentience, is what you are. What every so-called person is. Behind every face, every identity, what you find is not a sentient thing, not an entity that is conscious, but just this sensing, knowing and feeling. Sentience itself. The very same being. So where does this belief of an individual self and all these other persons even come from? That is Maya. How reality wails itself as if with a magic trick. Even after hearing all this, even though your experience matches what is being pointed out, the body and mind continue to operate based on this model of individual sentient entities. The idea that the world is populated by completely separate, isolated, conscious beings. But what is the proof of such beings when all that is ever perceived is in sentient phenomena? The intellect points to the phenomena in this moment, imagines another stream of similar phenomena, and declares there are two entirely different persons. People. I. You. He, she, we. This is not scientific or rational. This is just a consensus belief, or rather a mass delusion built into these streams of experience, built into language and the ways of thinking. This is the conditioning, the evolutionary programming. 
the blinders that tie your identity to this story. This belief in individuality requires space and time to be the absolute reality. The insentient phenomena, the experiences, are perceived with respect to specific points in space and time. And if space and time are taken to be absolute and real, then it is easy to forget the nature of consciousness and believe that they are separate conscious entities existing at different points in space and time. But now tell me, has science found space and time to be absolute or relative? In your own experience, is the passing of time absolute or subjective? Of course, there are distinct streams and rivers and oceans of experience, but they are all the same consciousness in action. All phenomena are local and relative, but consciousness is not local. Sentience is not bound to any object in space and time. Just consider that carefully. Sentience is not bound to any particular object in space and time. Non-local, absolute, intrinsic to reality. If you just stop labeling this as my experience and imagining some other entity owning another experience, And then look at this moment. What is it like? Then there is just the seeing, the hearing, the sensing, the feeling, and the knowing. And the perceiving of all this, the happening of it, is inseparable from pure awareness, indistinguishable from what you are, then all this is not personal, and you are not local. I, you, he, she, we. I, you, he, she, we. In the garden of mystic lovers, these are not true distinctions. <laughs>